Beats was first established in 2006. Initially, they partnered with a company called Monster Cable to design and manufacture the first generation. About two years after that, in 2008, the first set was released and it was called Beats by Dr. Dre Studio Headphones. In 2012, Beats decided not to renew their contract with Monster and ultimately gained their freedom to completely create and design their own headphones independently. While mobile phone manufacturer HTC did hold about a 25% stake in the company, they eventually sold it back for $265 million. If you fast forward that to May 8th, 2014, where the acquisition talks by Apple were accidentally released by Tyrese Gibson in a video posted to Facebook. It's not often do you get to listen to Beats with Mr. Beats himself. Oh! Billionaire Boys Club for real, homie. Huh? Fix your face. The Forbes list just changed. Oh my. The first billionaire in hip hop in West Coast. Believe me. Oh, oh, shit. Finally, on August 1st, 2014, Apple seals the deal on purchasing Beats for a whopping $3.2 billion. So, since then, even after all of the hype, the massive marketing campaigns, the celebrity and sports star endorsements, I was still never swayed enough into buying a pair of these cans. Not a single time. They, quite frankly, just never appealed to me. There was absolutely no benefit to buying these over what I already had. So what has Apple done to encourage me to finally purchase the Solo 3 Wireless? Well, in a word, technology. But before we get to that, let's bang on a few other drums. First up, the unboxing experience. It's exactly what you would expect from Apple. It's clean, it's beautiful, and it's rich looking. This is a point I really do think that most other companies just don't understand. Perceived value starts the second that you hold the box. And when you unbox anything from Apple, your perception is immediately enhanced because of how well they do it. Not to mention the presentation. You get like two or three unboxing experiences with these headphones. It's like layers on a cake, each one taking you further and feeding you that next delicious morsel. It's such a gratifying experience. Second is design. Let's just be honest. Beats are some of the best looking headphones on the market today. They are simple, they're fashionable, they're well designed, and they look like they truly belong in Apple's stable of minimalistically designed products. They've got clean lines, they've got minimal buttons, and they have a manageable size, and it all makes them extremely attractive. Third is the portability. With the ability to drastically reduce the overall size by folding them and fitting them into your backpack or your messenger bag, it turns your listening experience mobile. Being able to use the same pair of cans, whether you're at home or on the go, just makes consistency a reality. You don't have to do much compromising in the audio quality just because you have to leave your house. So that brings me to the audio quality. Point blank, these are probably not the best pair of headphones that you'll ever put on your head. It's not even in the same ballpark, but to be fair, these are not and have not, and probably never will be designed for the ultra critical listener. These are not reference class headphones. Only the ultra audiophiles and the purists and audio editors want that kind of thing. They actively seek out the most acoustically dead headphones so that while they listen to their production, they can hear it exactly the way that sounds without any enhancements. And to be perfectly honest, I completely get that. I own reference class headphones myself. And when I'm working on anything involving audio, I don't want anything to skew the audio and cover up anything that needs to be corrected. But after the production, the editing, the tweaking, and the mastering process though, what you do want is a set of headphones that helps you to enjoy the end user listening experience. And this is where the wireless Solo 3s come in. So some of you guys may actually be wondering whether or not these are isolation style headphones. And I can tell you that they're not. You do get, for the vast majority, most sound isolation, but you are still going to be able to hear some things when there is no music around uh, in your headphones to listen to. Um, you're also going to want to be conscious of the fact that these do leak just a little bit. Uh, so if you happen to do a lot of traveling on a plane or a train and you really crank up that volume, I'd say around 50% uh, to 75%, you may end up disturbing your neighbor on the trip. So that's just something to keep in mind. As far as the clamping force on these headphones go, um, most headphones for me 
are always just a little bit too much for my liking. I tend to have kind of a big head. So if you have a smaller head, uh, it may not be as big of a deal for you, but I seem to have that kind of problem with almost every set of headphones that I wear. Now, as far as the durability of the headband, you can really twist and turn and torque this thing quite a bit, and it seems like it's extremely, extremely durable. So now let's just talk about how I feel about the audio in general. In those older pairs of Beats, a lot of times those were just so bass heavy that they completely drowned out all the mid and the high end. Um, also, the older Beats, in my opinion, the, the, the high ends were just really tinny and more fatiguing than anything else. I just found myself getting really wore out just trying to enjoy a song, especially if they had a lot of hi-hat or a lot of high ends and stuff. It was just very fatiguing to my ears and I just couldn't do it for very long. Uh, not having the mids uh, so muddied like they were in previous generations, you're able to enjoy um, a lots of different types of music now that maybe you weren't so uh, keen on listening to with a pair of beats beforehand, uh, like trap music or techno music where you do have a wide Wide ranging uh, dubstep, stuff like that, wide ranging uh, varying styles of uh, different instruments and different uh, synthesizers and different drum machines, uh, you're going to enjoy your experience a lot more in my personal opinion. Uh, I know that I do. Uh, as far as the bass, they're deep and they're punchy, but they're not overly bleeding constantly over into those mids and highs uh, like they once were, which makes listening to a wider range of music much, much more enjoyable. Now, remember when I said it was technology that encouraged me to finally buy a set? Well, the setup and the pairing process is just absolutely seamless now, especially if you're already entrenched in the Apple ecosystem. Apple has included the all-new W1 chip. What does that mean? What's the big deal with the W1 chip? When you first turn it on next to your unlocked iPhone or iPad, all you have to do is click connect, and they're automatically paired with not only that device, but every other Apple device that's signed into your iCloud account. If you want to switch it from one device to another, from your iPhone to your Mac or back again, it just takes a click. Also, let's talk about the range. Now, I can easily have my phone charging in the bedroom and walk to the other end of my house to my office and never lose connection. I mean, not even a stutter. And Bluetooth headphones are notorious for being bad when you have walls between, you know, you and your device. So having the ability to move around and do whatever you want and get your daily chores done without having to drag both your phone and your headphones around, it's a really big deal. Next up, let's talk about some battery life. The tech that they've packed in to this generation of Beats has effectively doubled the battery life of some of the most high-priced Bluetooth headphones on the market. The difference between 20 hours and 40 hours is huge. Even if you forget to charge your headphones like after a full day of use, you'll more than likely still have enough juice to last you for probably another day or two. And in the unlikely event that you do start running a little bit low, all you have to do is just plug them up for about five minutes and that gives you a full three hours of listening time. And that is perfect, say, if you're going to the gym, you just quick charge them while you're in the car and you'll get an hour or two of battery when you get there. In conclusion, the Beats Solo 3s are not my best sounding headphones, but they are more fun and functional than all my other ones combined. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by, hanging out, and watching my video. And if you appreciated the content, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you were interested in seeing some more videos just like this. At any rate, guys, thanks again for stopping here at the Photo Video Show. I'm your host, Mark Puckett, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace.